in this video, I'm going to be telling you about every single item indoors, as well as some secret items that you might have not known existed. Okay, so the very first item that we got here is a lockpick, and I'm pretty sure you already know how it works. It's very self-explanatory. Basically, what it does is it lets you unlock a door without actually having that room key equipped in. And it's recommended to use lockpicks in situations where finding the key to the room is difficult, such as rooms that are dark and rooms with multiple subrooms, or a combination of the two. Using a lockpick while in a dark room may reduce the chance of encountering the Screech monster, which is obviously going to be very helpful because you don't need to fling your character around to look at the monster. Lockpicks can be used at the electric room door as an alternative for the electrical room key even without opening the gate and just in case you were wondering a player can carry a total of three lock picks at once you cannot have more because that would be a little bit too overpowered if all the players in the game actually have a light source lock picks or vitamins will start spawning instead of light sources it's pretty cool because the game knows not to give you stuff that you already have and if you want to buy lock picks the way you do it is at the start of a round and to buy three different lock picks you have to spend a total of 75 knobs and keep in mind that lock picks can break without unlocking the lock however However, the chances of that happening are very low, so rest assured. Anyways, let's head over to the next item. Alright, next item that we got on the list is the flashlight. And the flashlight is a type of light source that can be found in containers or you can pre-buy it at the shop before the game starts. And a 60% chance of it being sold at Jeff's shop for a total of 200. Flashlights can actually spawn in super hard mode, but they only spawn after door 2 in the normal mode. When you equip the flashlight, it can be a very, very good light source. And keep in mind that having a light source reduces the chance of the screech monster spawning. So this can be pretty useful. But keep in mind, while it's active, it's draining the batteries that it has. And once the batteries run out, you have to find new ones or else your flashlight is pretty useless and obviously you can find extra batteries when you're looting containers and these extra batteries can only be found when there's at least one player in the game that has a flashlight the batteries recharge 30 percent of the flashlight's power which means you need around three batteries to recharge it completely and unlike the lighter the flashlight will stay in your inventory even when the batteries have fully drained but anyways that's pretty much it for the flashlight let's head over to the next item Alright, next up we got yet another light source, and this is obviously the lighter, and this is an item that you can find in containers, buy from the pregame shop or Jeff shop. The lighter has a total of 60 seconds of fuel time, which is 15 seconds per bar, and the shop price is either 50 knobs or 100 coins, and having the lighter out and activator will slowly use up its fuel, and once it's out of fuel, it will be completely removed from your inventory. The fuel of the lighter is divided into 4 different bars, and when each bar is consumed, you'll need an extra spark to light your lighter. So basically, the lower your lighter is the harder it's going to be to use it but it's just sparks so it doesn't take that long keep in mind that the lighter's fuel cannot be replenished the only way you can change the fuel of your lighter is by getting a completely new one and if you actually attempt to change your lighter for one that has less fuel the game will actually stop you from doing that but i'm not sure why anyone wants to do it in the first place and it's recommended that you only use the lighter in dark rooms just like the flashlight because it reduces the chances of the screech monster spawning but keep in mind it does not entirely prevent it from spawning if all players in the game have a lighter with more than 50 percent fuel that will actually stop all lighters in the game from spawning. And if anyone's found a flashlight, then lighters will completely stop spawning. But in my opinion, the flashlight is better anyway, so just stick to that if you haven't. Never trade it in for a lighter. Next item that we got on the list are the vitamins, and this is a type of item that can rarely be found in containers, and you can buy from the pregame shop as well as Jeff's shop. And its shop price is 100 knobs or 100 coins. When you actually eat the vitamins, then you get a temporary speed boost, and once you use all of your vitamins, they will be completely removed from your inventory. But keep in mind that you cannot actually stack your effects with these vitamins so you can only take one at a time but it would be pretty cool if you could but then if you're playing with people you would literally leave them in the dust and you can also only carry a maximum of three vitamins at the same time and the reason vitamins are useful in the game is because they can help you evade fast entities such as the figure monster and the seek monster keep in mind that vitamin boosts actually stack with your speed in the seek chase which can make you run very very fast because everyone knows in the seek chase you run a lot faster and with the vitamins you can go even faster you literally be like the flash and keep in mind that when you're using vitamins they disable the ability to be silent when you're crouching so it's not a good idea to use these in the library and if you actually want some vitamins to spawn in if all players in the game have an active light source like a lighter or a flashlight then all light sources will stop spawning in and you only get vitamins and lock picks which is a little bit more useful depending on what you have but that's it for the vitamins let's head over to the next item Next up, we got another light source on this list, and this is the candle. And the candle is a light source that can occasionally only be found on tables, so you cannot actually buy this from any type of shops in the game. The candle has a total fuel time of 75 seconds, so that's 25 seconds better than the lighter. And it covers 18.75 seconds per bar. When you equip the candle, it instantly creates a small source of light around you. And obviously, if you have it equipped, it, it slowly drains the candle's fuel time. And once it's out of fuel, it will be completely removed from your inventory. When a hostile 
hostile entity is nearby, the candle's flame will actually turn blue, and the candle will eventually blow out. It basically lets you know when a monster is next to you. But it does actually get blown out, so that might not be very good in dark rooms. And regardless of the fuel, the flame of the candle will return when the entity has passed away. But keep in mind that the candle's flame will not go out in the presence of the snare monster. So I guess when you have a candle, that's the only monster you have to be aware of. Anyways, let's head over to the next item. Okay, so the next item we got here is actually very, very self-explanatory. And this is the room key. And they're obviously used to unlock specific doors in the hotel that are locked. And the number of the door you have to open corresponds with the room key icon. Obviously, you cannot buy this from the shop. The only place you can get it is in a certain room, usually very, very huge ones. And they are a pain to find. If you're speedrunning, I recommend you just buy lockpicks and just run it down. But if you're not a speedrunner and you're not spending extra money on lockpicks, then you have to search for these keys. They can be found under beds, inside cupboards, and drawers. So make sure you open everything. And once you get it, you can open the door and head over to the next room. Next item that I have here, I'm pretty sure a lot of you will not know about, and that is the crucifix. You can use the crucifix to protect yourself from a butt ton of monsters. And it's commonly an item that's in sale at Jeff's shop, with roughly a 60% chance of being available. It costs a total of 500 coins to buy from Jeff's shop. But you can obviously also find it in containers, mounted on the bedroom walls, on top of doors inside chests, and on tables with a 1 out of 150% chance. So if you find it on top of a table inside a chest or over a door, then you're very, very lucky. When you equip the crucifix, and hold out when a monster attacks you, the crucifix will actually chain the entity and stop it. And then an angelic symbol will appear on the floor as well as a blue fog aura that spins around and drags itself through the entity. It's a pretty weird sequence. But keep in mind that the Seek and the Figure Boss are only stunned by its chains and they can actually escape them after a few seconds. When the chains begin to glow red, you'll know that they're breaking out, so run as fast as you can. But keep in mind that the crucifix is actually a one-use item and it will be completely removed from your inventory after its one use. But keep in mind that it actually does not completely completely remove the enemies even if you crush them, the monsters that are destroyed with the crucifix will actually spawn in later in the run. But that won't happen if you die before it, so make sure you stay alive. But anyways, that's pretty much it for the crucifix, let's head over to the next item and this one is pretty cool. Alright, now we got the skeleton key, and like I mentioned before, this is a pretty cool item. And this item can be bought for a total of 300 coins at Jeff's shop. And more rarely, it can be found inside containers or on top of tables. Pretty cool thing about this item is that back in the day when it was in the game, it actually cost a total of 400 coins, and before that, 250. But now they balanced it out to a total price of 300. The skeleton key can be used on the skeleton door in the abandoned hospital at the infirmary. After being used on the skeleton door, it basically dissolves and lets you to enter the room which is inside. And this room actually contains the herb of Viridus, and a butt ton of drawers which have a lot of gold inside them. The herb will give you the ability of passive health regeneration, literally 1 HP per second. And that's when you interact and you'll actually keep this buff for the rest of your run. But keep in mind the effect is obviously removed after death, so if you do revive, you actually will not keep that ability. And other than using to get the herb, you can actually use the skeleton key to enter the rooms. The entrance to this is hidden behind a destroyed door around door 60. The skeleton key also functions as a lockpick, but keep in mind that will be a complete waste if you use this good of an item just as a regular lockpick. And the max for lockpicks in this game is actually 3, but I guess having a skeleton key actually bypasses that because then you're technically holding 4 lockpicks. But anyways, that's pretty much it for the skeleton key.